hello it's Sarah and this morning we're gonna do this little ornament I'm gonna do a tutorial so let's get started I want to show you tell you what you need the first thing you're gonna do is um, you're gonna need the pattern which this is a free pattern from Renee Mullins and her website is www Plum Purdy Designs. No, it's not. PlumPurdy.com. I'll put that in the description box. Um, and you're going to print out this Winter Wonderland pattern. It's in free patterns. So once you have that, it tells you all the supplies you'll need. You're going to need some paint, and um, it's it's a lot. I mean, there's at least 20 colors on here. You can make do with what you have, something close to that color. I mean, you can see the picture. There's blue, red, gold, white, and like a cream color, you know? Um, so just use what you have. Um, a dark green, a light green, you know what I mean? Like, don't think you need to get these exact colors. Um, I also have a conversion book, and I'll show you that while we're at it. This is old. This one's from... This is the seventh edition. I don't know if there's a date on here, but it is old. And it's an acrylic conversion book. Let me see if there's a date. I don't see it. Anywho, it will help you with when you have when someone else is painting with a certain brand of paint, you can convert that to the color that it is in the brand that you have. So She's painting with Decaward Americana paint, and I had some of the colors in that brand, but I had some in um, Ceram Coat, so I just converted, like Desert Sand is Sandstone, and Americana, it's Desert Sand, and it's Sandstone in Ceram Coat. Anyway, um, you're going to need some paints, so just look, like I said, look at the picture, get a couple greens, a blue, a red, a, an orange for the nose, you know, just so you can play and paint along with me. So that's the first thing you're going to need. The next thing you're going to need to get is some tracing paper. And this is just a piece of tracing paper um, that I cut from another piece of tracing paper because this is a small pattern. And you're going to trace the design. And we're painting the snowman. So you put your tracing paper on and you literally just trace around it. And I probably tend to put all the details. I didn't do, obviously you can see here, I'm going to try and zoom in. I hate zooming because, okay, good. Um, I did not trace the twigs because I just freehanded them. Like, it's a brush technique. You don't need to trace every little detail on here. It's just a guideline, and then you don't have to do any erasing. And I use this old eraser. I think this is called an art gum eraser. I'm not sure. I have every eraser there is. I have a whole bag of every eraser but you can erase the graphite so this is graphite graphite is um, what we're gonna trace the pattern onto our piece with and I have two colors um, the light and the dark because if like say for um, instance I'm gonna be painting the next thing I'm gonna do with you guys I found this in the basement this plaque and it was already base coated I just sanded it real good I'm going to paint this next. I want to do the snowman plate, but it's an 8-inch plate. I had this. It's 8 inches. It's perfect. So you can get this in the wood department, and I'll put a hanger on it, and it could be, you know, I mean, it could be a trivet if you put something, some polyurethane-type varnish or something. Um, but anyway, um, looking forward to that because it'll be bigger, and it'll be easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. And there are, are different techniques on here, like he's not stippled. Um, and, but like I said, I wouldn't trace all this greenery on here. You don't need to. I mean, you, I'll show you what the pattern has, actually. The pattern has this wavy line. Here it is. So that is a great thing to trace. She's perfect for that. Um, so you would trace this wavy line and have that be your guideline for these twigs. So then you could kind of pull to it. I'll show you how to do it. But... Um, basically the tracing is, um, the line work is your guideline to, uh, what you're going to be painting, but as best you can try and do it, you know, without every little detail, 
Um, I always trace it onto my tracing paper, all the details, but I don't always trace all the, um, well, see, I lied because I don't. <laughs> I don't have all the details on here. I don't have the buttons. I don't have his eyes, you know. I mean, anywho, all right. So that's the first step. You want to trace this onto tracing paper, and then we're going to take our piece, and you're in a base coat. So let's go to the directions, and I'll just walk you right through what um, she has you do. So here's your supplies, then you, and you have some brushes, so let's go over that. I actually, Renee paints differently than I do, and she does things differently than I do. So I'm not going to be doing word for word what she has on here, um, but what she has on here is awesome. So here's what I have to paint with. She has a liner, a number 20 slash aught, and I do happen to have that. This is, oh, a 10 slash aught. So I have that, but that's the script liner. That's gonna give us like nice details. A two and four round. I don't know what number this one is, but I'm assuming it's around a two. And then I have, oh, I do have a two, and I have a four. So I have a two, four, and then this is just my little detailer that I love. And then an angle brush and three eighths inch angle. I have that, and a quarter inch she has too, but I'll do everything with this. A half inch flat and I don't have that but you you would want a flat brush I do have it um, a half inch flat is well this is actually a number 14 but it's around a half inch flat um, foam brushes because she probably base coats with a foam brush and she doesn't have it but this stippler um, that's what I did the the detailing with on the snow with um, so, see, yeah, she has a kneaded eraser. She uses that for, um, she has a black micron pen that she uses for detailing. I didn't do any, um, line work detailing. Her pattern or her picture will show around the star and around everything. It looks like she might have done some black lines. I just didn't do that on mine. I didn't put the bow, um, you know, I just... It's my piece, so I changed it up and made it my piece. Um, so, let's see. Oh. Um, all right, so then here's your paints, and I told you about that. If you don't have a lot of paint, if you're not a painter and you want to try this, just get a cup. You know, I mean, go see what you can find or get a red, a blue, a white. You know, you'll be able to do some of the techniques. Um, then, let's see. To prep your piece. I'm going to go over this whole thing. I want you to, you to know exactly what I would do. Um, <clears throat> sand your surface until smooth with a medium and then a fine grit sandpaper. I actually am going to talk about the wood first because we're painting on paper mache and it's a totally different thing. Um, but with wood, you, it's a porous surface, so you need to seal the surface. And to do that, you can use an all-purpose sealer, and I'm going to go get it. Well, you know what? I'm going to go away and come back, and I'll have that on my desk. Um, a lot of you guys who have watched my channel before probably have gesso, which is usually to prepare a canvas surface. I never use gesso. I mean, unless you have a lot of, um, sometimes pine or different woods will have knots in it, and there's sap in there. And if you paint on a piece that has a knot, the sap will come through. I've had pieces that I've had for years, for 10 years, and then you'll start to see it, it has kind of seeped through the wood because wood is a natural surface. So you want to prepare it as best you can. Um, all right, I'll be right back. Okay, so for what I do out of laziness, prepping has always been, that's like boring to me. I hate sanding. I hate, you know, prepping the piece is not fun for me. I want to paint. I want to do the details. So I tr probably skip steps or whatever. Renee has you doing, uh, she, she has you sanding, removing the dust with a tack cloth. I use a wet wipe or a paper towel. Seal your wood with your wood sealer and let completely dry. So she, what kind of sealer did she have on here? Uh, she has a DecoArt Matte Spray Sealer. Hey, that sounds pretty easy actually. I've never tried that one. But it seems like you can just spray the piece and let it dry and your wood is sealed. So that might be a good way to go. 
what I've always done to skip a step <coughs> is basically this is a sealer, all purpose sealer for surface preparation. It's a product by Josonia's. And that's because, I mean, look at the bottle. It's huge and I still have a ton, well, a little bit left. But what, what, you, would, what you would do is, um, it says, apply full strength to clean, dry, sanded wood or dilute one-to-one -one with clear glaze or flow medium. I, per, per, let's see, for one step base coat, mix and apply paint with all purpose sealer one-to-one, -one, sand when dry and apply a second coat. That's what I do. Okay, so basically you take your palette here and you put whatever color, this is gonna be blue, this plate, so I'm gonna redo it. I don't have to seal it again because I'm pretty sure I sealed it already. I'm just gonna paint blue over this. But I would do a little puddle of sealer, of the all-purpose sealer, and a little puddle of the base color, which is gonna be a blue, and mix that and then base coat my wood. Let it dry, give it a sand, sand it because it brings out like a the bumpies in the in the wood when it um, when you pit, put something on it give it a fine sanding and then do one more thin coat with just straight paint with just the color let that dry and then your surface is ready before I had this the um, the all-purpose sealer and they may sell it at Michaels now I don't know this I had to get at a paint store at like a um, it was a studio a paint studio before that, I just would mix matte varnish. Let's see if it says it on here. No, this is just saying that you can use it for um, to finish your piece. But we actually would take, do the same thing with a varnish, a matte varnish, do it one to one, and it would seal your piece. I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't know what's in here that's different than that, but I've sealed many, many a piece with um, matte varnish and paint mixed one-to-one -one ratio, and then done the same thing. Given this an all-over coat of paint, just covered it, then give it a little, a light sanding, and then go back in with a, a nice thin coat of just the paint color, and your surface is ready. So there are any number of ways that you can do it, but you should seal the piece, and you're gonna base coat. Now, the other thing was Renee also base is her piece different. I like to put a solid color of color on here before I start so I have a background color. But she, for this little piece, and I keep putting it somewhere, where the heck did I put it? Gosh, here it is, sorry. <laughs> um, I just drank some coffee, let's see. So she has you, um, after the wood sealer has dried and again, remove any remaining dust or tackle. Trace the design onto your tracing paper, which I talked about. Take that and position it onto your surface. Slip a piece of graphite paper underneath. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Um, making sure to keep your trace drawing positioned correctly on the surface. Transfer your lines onto your surface by going over the trace design with your pencil or stylus, making sure not to press too hard or you will leave indentations in your surface. Pine is a soft wood. So if you take, I, I didn't show you, but I have a stylus here. This is called a stylus and I will be tracing my pattern with a stylus. You can use a pencil um, as well or any pointed object, you know, not too pointy. Um, uh, but yeah, you can push too, uh, too hard and make indentations in your surface. Um, so, okay, that's how she has you prepping the piece. So basically, it's naked wood with a tracing on it. I didn't get that. I don't get it. But then she has you painting in this whole sky area. So you would just paint the sky area around your snowman, whatever color the sky is. Then you would paint the snow area. You know, so she has you kind of doing that. I like what I did and what we're going to do, and I've done already on here, is painted my um, ornament. The sky color. So it's base coated the sky color. I put paper on the back because it, it has stickers on it and it gets really rough, so whatever. Um, so that's the sky color. Then we're gonna trace our pattern on. Um, I gotta change my battery. And um, it just it's just easier for me. I don't know. I think it's, I don't know. To each his own, and that's the thing. That's why taking so many classes for me from so many artists um, people have been in the business for years and newbies who came up with new ways to do things, you know, old, um, 
oil painters who, who then tried to switch it up and get into acrylics, had their techniques where it was a lot more um, blendy techniques. So anyway, you're going to do, once I give you the information I have, maybe you'll explore other ways as well. But do what works best for you. Do what you're comfortable with. Don't do anything that doesn't make you happy. <laughs> um, because, you know, you want to make the process as smooth and as happy as, as you can. So, all right, let's begin. I'm going to show you how to trace the pattern on here. I have to change my battery. I'll be right back. Okay, change my battery. Um, I will probably refer you to this video in the future. When I do another video, I'm going to probably begin after this step. We're going to have you start traced. So, in order to do that, and you might want to use a piece of tape. You know what, I'm going to move um, the camera a little bit. I just don't want to get bumped or... I'm sorry. All right, this is this is it, guys. I'm going to try and do this. And it's a small piece, so maybe I will um, zoom in, but I want to get this tracing done first. And I needed some room. So, if, like, for instance, if I were doing this bigger piece, you can tape it down. You can take a piece of scotch tape, and I like to rub it on. I stick it to my leg first to get a little lint on there so it's not real, real sticky. And you can tape it down, take, tape the tracing paper onto your piece so it doesn't move. And you can lift it up and look under there and see what you got traced, okay? But for this one, we're just going to hold it in place. I'm going to line it up where I want it, and I'll hold it in place. And I'll just make sure I, if I need to lift, I'm going to make sure that I'm um, holding it, all right? Um, the other thing is... Uh, Hold on, I was gonna say something. Oh crap, it'll come to me. Um, oh, oh, you wanna make sure you're using the right side of the paper. Okay, so if I start tracing, la 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 la, I'm tracing. Nothing showed up on the paper because it's upside down. So I start tracing, la 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 la, and I'm tracing. There's a line, okay? Can you see that? Yes, okay, good. I don't know how many times, probably more than I'd like to admit, I've traced not, hopefully not the whole design on there and the graphite paper was upside down so you really need to check sometimes I'll put even put a paint mark like just put a splop of paint on the top so that you know which side is the right side to start tracing with so this is the top so we can trace okay um so I am going to position him because I'm it's a heart shape but I'm doing it on a round I'm just going to center him kind of like that and then I'm going to slip my graphite underneath you see that I'll try and zoom in a little bit let's see awesome okay so now um like I said I do not put all the details this is small you guys it's it might not have been the best for um teaching purposes but you're going to want to paint small stuff sometimes so um, I am not going to worry about the nose because I will freehand that in but you might want to you know base your nose I'm not really worried about um, let's see look let's see what we have it's not real clear either this is old graphite which I kind of like better because, like I said, you're not erasing a lot of lines then. Because when you use a brand new graphite, which you guys might have if you're brand new to this, you know, it's got to be brand new sometime. Um, you're going to have dark, dark lines. So you probably don't need to push as hard. But there, he's coming. I got a face and a scarf and a vest, part of his vest. I need this line, so I'm going to... Just scooch this a little bit and get this line here. I'm going to put this one in, even though, I mean, I could fudge it. And I'm going to go up this side of his body. I'm not going to put the fence because I will freehand the fence. I'm not going to put his arms. I'm not going to put the star because 
we're going to base coat the body first, then I'll put the star on, um, or I'm going to highlight it anyway. Okay, this little part of his vest I didn't put yet. My stomach's growling, sorry. Um, what else? I'm not going to put the moon at the moment because uh, I'm going to put the hill, just this part of the hill. Oops. I think I'm good. I think I have everything on there that I need to get me started. I'm not going to put his arms. I said that. Is that scarf there good enough? Yeah. All right, I think I'm good. So I'm going to set my graphite aside and my tracing. And I keep, usually I'll keep the line drawing handy as a reference. That's what, oops, see now I'm zoomed in and you can't see. I, we also used to keep the picture, definitely keep the picture handy and keep the line drawing as well because then you can have it as a reference. Um, all right, so next we're going to start painting this little guy. Um, <clears throat> see if I, if I leave it right here, I think that's actually, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing at the palette though. So I think I definitely, I want to, um, I need to zoom out a little bit. It's just that it's, I think the next tutorial when I do the, um, this plaque, it's going to be better because uh, it'll be bigger and I can spread out a little more. But I am going to try and get a little bit more in the shot and I'll, maybe when I'm painting. For base coating though, there's not a lot to loading the brush, so I'll just, once I show you once, we'll be off and ready to go. So I use a little um, styrofoam plate for my palette. You can use whatever, a piece of paper. You can use a real palette. I don't know. Um, you need a water source. I have this water bucket over here. Um, what's it? Artist Loft. I like it because it has ridges on the bottom. My water is dirty. I'll clean it when we get to details. Um, you need a paper towel. I have about three halves kind of stacked and folded over. This is called a wax palette and it's basically, it's not wax paper because I, I'm sure I've tried wax paper in the past to see if I, you know, get away with it, but it's actually called, um, a disposable palette. And you get this at Michael's or AC Moore in the art department. Um, but it's basically like a waxy paper that you can um, load your brush on. So, you getting going, Matt? Yeah. All right, buddy. Drive carefully. Um, all right, so we're going to get out some what first? She's having you uh, do the sky and curved edge base with desert sand. So that's what I based the whole thing with. So that's the sky. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to erase this line right now because I don't like, because it's not on the heart, it, the angle is weird. So I'm just going to make it match this one actually and I'm going to, I actually like it uh, a little, but you can take a pencil even and just, I like that better. It kind of matches a little better. All right. Um, so that's the sky. For the snowman, we're going to do um, with sand. And I substituted flesh tan for the sand because I did not have sand. So I'm looking for that. And flesh tan. Shake up your bottle. Got to get all that stuff that's in there mixed together. And put a little bit on your palette. And I usually just put a little. You don't need like a dime if that. Um, and we're going to paint the whole snowman in right now. Base the snowman and the snow with sand. Okay. So I would use, I'm probably going to use this number four round. And I'll tell you why. It's a little surface. What, what's going to be great when I do the other pieces, I'm going to show you how you really base coat. But this is so tiny, you have to just work with what you can kind of using that small surface. So here's how I'm going to load my brush to base coat. I went into my water, blot on the paper towel, then you come into this puddle and you pull away, you pull into it, flip your brush. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes. Good, good, good. 
And now I'm loading the brush. There's a little, that's not straight paint. It's paint and water that's on my brush. So I'm gonna go into that. And it's actually a, a lighter version of the sky because this is a very country piece. <clears throat> I always put my paint down in the middle and work toward the edges. That way I can go over all my um, ridges. When you put your paint down, Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not even in the shot. This is going to be an interesting way to... Okay. But I always put my paint down in the middle and work toward the edges. And this brush... Um, the brush is a little bit small for this, but I like it because a round brush is good because you can get into those nooks and crannies. And you can also flatten it out. And you know what? I don't need to be doing this. This is all snow. So I can go over the whole entire thing. That wasn't a very good uh, <laughs> demonstration because I, I went right into my uh, big puddle of paint and didn't uh, get it slicker and wetter. But this is all snow. So that's the thing. Um, we, you might want to put those tracing lines back on here when this dries. I'll wing it probably, or I'll use a pencil and just uh, can't forget. Now his, um, this is a vest over here, the other part of his vest, but this is his little body. Hopefully I'm in the shot. Because when I paint, I'm like really focused. <laughs> I love it. It's like a meditative state for me. Very relaxing. I love, love, love it. It feels good. Um, so, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> then we're going to base coat the scarf. And that's a blue scarf. We're going to base coat the um, vest and the hat. And then I'll come back and I'll start showing you the, um, how to make the... Um, the details, how to add the shading and the highlighting and all that stuff, okay? So I'm going to base coat this. You know what? It's going to probably take two coats, two thin coats to cover because you want it to be opaque. Um, you don't want see-through. Some styles of painting you do want see-through, but for this particular style, you don't want see-through. So I'm going to go away and I'll come back when it's all based. Okay, so this is my first coat. Um, you know what's funny? I just used my um, heat gun to kind of speed up the drying a little bit. Um, and I just remember we used to have blow dryers because like I had an old blow dryer that I got in a yard sale one time that I carried with me too to, to speed up the, the base coating time. But um, I knew nothing of a heat gun at the time. Um, but yes, you can do that. Just be careful because you don't want to burn um, the surface or anything. So I just wanted to show you between coats now, I've got my first coat on there um, and you can still see the tracing lines around the snow and um, around his head mostly. I'm going to take that eraser and I'm going to erase those as best I can. We're going to be shading around the surface too, but I don't need those lines on here anymore. So I'm going to get them off. And you can still see um, underneath the paint, like the bottom of the snowman, but I'm about to cover all that up anyway. I just wanted to show you, um, this is such a small detailed piece. I really am using a tiny brush, and I would say this is a number one round possibly. It's a, I call it a detailer because it's, I don't know, it's like short and stumpy and I can get into details with it. Like, Probably your hat doesn't need another coat. The black cover's fine. Um, but like I'm going to go ahead and do the scarf another coat. So I'm going to go to my water blot. Pick up some of that. I use burgundy rose. And I'm picking some up. Loading my brush. Kind of flattening it out. So see I have, it's kind of like a skinny and flat gotta have the right tools or it makes the process so much more difficult um, if you have the right tools it's gonna make you so much happier like you're just gonna be able to 
do what you want to do and you're not going to struggle. Um, another great tool to have at the ready is a Q-tip. And I have mine always when you're painting. I have a little Tom and Jerry cup from Jelly from years ago. And I keep my Q-tips in there. And I usually have one ready to go. Um, because acrylics they dry fast but they don't dry that fast so you can um, like if I go out of the lines or I don't like something you can just take your q-tip and get it off um, before it dries so but see now I flattened this brush out like so it's not it can go wide or skinny so I'm gonna take it and just get that little slice there of that vest and get it in there. Once you add the details, all the all the base coating, all your you know, you, if you're a perfectionist, this isn't where you want it perfect. You can you can cover up a lot of the um, imperfections of of base coating with the details, with the shading and the highlighting and all that stuff. So, I mean, you basically just want to have um, an opaque coverage, so not see through. And even if some parts of it are a little see-through, you're still going to cover that with shading and highlighting and details. So I think my vest is pretty um, solid. I'm going to go ahead and do the scarf. And I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush. This is the number four round. Water, blot, pick up some blue. I'm going to show you again. I go into the puddle, pull it out like this pushing it into the brush. So again, I have a thin, I can do it thin or thick. So I can go thick to thin. And that's what a brush, that's what these round brushes are for because you can push down, I can get really wide. So you have a lot of uses for this. Or you can get right up on the tip and really make a thin line. Okay, so depending on how you're holding the brush, you want the paint to flow off the brush. You need a little bit of water in the paint to help it move. Okay, so you don't just want to go right into that puddle and then to your piece because, I mean, if you do, you're just it's just going to be gloppy. Let's see if I'm in the shot. Oops, got to get that Q-tip. See, I, I pushed, my, my brush was nice and juicy, so I pushed down a little too hard. And it went right onto his face, but I just got it right off. But like, I'm just hitting it kind of, maybe make, sharpening up my edges a little bit. But like, this color covered pretty good with one coat. So it's pretty opaque. I'm, I don't have to be as particular as I was for the first coat. You're just kind of making sure um, it doesn't have any obvious... Um, sheer parts to it you know but that's basically oops sorry basically um solid base coated so then i'm going to go over the snowman one more time too so i have water in my brush so i'm loading into the because it gets sticky your paint will get sticky when it's sitting here out in the air so you got to keep pulling a little slicker wetter puddle out of your original puddle and um, I slide up over to that edge and then see this brush is kind of small for this area down here because um, it's just big. I need some more flush tan. I usually just put you know a little bit of paint out at a time because it will dry out and you have that bottle so conveniently <laughs> You don't need to mix it or have a lot there for later. So you can keep it in the bottle when you need it. And I'm just keeping this moving. Keep it moving because, um, like I said, I mean, acrylics. Now, there's. A, I'm just going to clean up that edge. And there you go. Two thin coats, base coats, is the way I do it. I always... I like to have two nice, clean, thin coats of paint rather than um, 
otherwise it looks blotchy. Ugh, that wasn't a good Q-tip. The Q-tip had hard paint and it kind of mucked me up. Um, what was I saying? Anyway. And nice thin paint. See, this is too, going to be too wide, so I'm turning on the side. Just to get that edge crisp. All right, and then his face, just a little bit to make it opaque, meaning not transparent. You see how much time? Eight minutes, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed up his drying and then we're gonna start doing some techniques. Let me get a little coffee too. <laughs> all right, I'll be right back. 